Hello AP Chemistry. Let's take a quick review at acids, bases, and redox reactions. Well, what are acids and bases? If you remember from last year, we learned about three different models. The Arrhenius model said, if you have an H, you're an acid. The Bronsted-Lowry model said, if you donate protons, you're an acid. And then the Lewis model is a little bit weird. If they accept electrons, they're acids. For right now, all you need to know is that if it has an H, it's going to be an acid. And the, remember, we also call H pluses protons because hydrogen is just a proton and an electron. And when you get rid of the electron, what do you have left? A proton. There are three different types of acids. There are monoprotic. Yep, that means they have one hydrogen. Diprotic, they have two. Triprotic acids have three hydrogen ions. Um, just a little note that... Even if you're a diprotic or a triprotic acid, typically it's the first hydrogen ion that wants to dissociate. The second and the third don't always come off. Sometimes, but not usually. Uh, bases are anything that accept hydrogen ions. Now the Arrhenius model said if you have an OH, you're a base, but that eliminated some things like NH3, ammonia is a base, but it doesn't have OH. So they just basically come out with the Bronsted-Lowry model. If you accept a hydrogen, you're a base. And then of course the Lewis base model, if you donate electrons, you're a base. But for right now, if you donate H's, you're an acid. If you accept them, you're a base. That's really all you need to know right now. If you remember from the last video, strong simply means it breaks down or dissociates or ionizes completely. Weak does not. You need to memorize the strong acids and the strong bases. The strong acids are HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, HClO3, HClO4, and H2SO4. Not all science, scientists agree that chloric acid is a strong acid, your book says it is, we'll go with it. The strong bases, um, basically, if you have anything with group one, except for hydrogen, and OH, it is a strong base. So lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and so on. Group two elements, only calcium, strontium, and barium, the heavier ones. When they are with OH, they are considered strong. So calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide are strong. Some scientists argue that magnesium hydroxide is a strong base. It's not very soluble, but what does break down, breaks down all the way. Your book says no, but some scientists go either way. Any other acid or base that is not on this list are considered weak, period. You need to memorize these and you need to know the formulas. Anytime an acid and a base are mixed together, we get what's called a neutralization reaction. They neutralize each other. They always produce water and a salt. And before I forget, neutralization reaction does not necessarily mean that your ending pH will be seven. If you have a strong acid with a weak base, it's probably gonna end below seven. If you have a strong base with a weak acid, it's probably gonna end up in that basic pH range. Strong acid, strong base, usually it's around seven. We define a salt as simply a cation, so the positive ion, that comes from a base. And the base is usually a metal hydroxide, like calcium hydroxide. And the anion comes from the acid. So if you have HCl, the anion would be Cl. When a metal sulfide reacts with an acid, you will get H2S along with a salt. And when carbonates and bicarbonates react with acid, you will get a salt and carbon dioxide. For now, we're just gonna look at what is a redox reaction? How do we assign oxidation numbers? But in unit nine during second semester, we will look at this in depth as we apply it to electrochemistry. It's a great unit. Basically, an oxidation re reduction reaction is just something where the electrons are being transferred. And because oxidation and reduction is long, we just like to say redox. Why? Because you can't have reduction without oxidation. I like to remember this with the term oil rig. I mean, I learned this back in 1991 and it still stuck with me. Oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. 
Some books use Leo Ger, loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction, whatever works for you. To determine if something is a redox reaction, you need to examine oxidation numbers. These are not necessarily the same as the charges on the periodic table. So let's take a look at the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. And just for the record, these are in your textbook. If you have a monoatomic ion all by itself, the oxidation number is the same as the charge. So let's say the reaction says Cu2 plus. That is a monoatomic ion. It has a two plus charge, therefore the oxidation number is plus two. Any atom in its elemental form has an oxidation number of zero. So if the reaction just says Mg, that's it. It's zero. If it says O2, well, that's how oxygen naturally exists, so it's zero. Group one and group two elements are plus one and plus two respectfully. Aluminum is always a plus three. Most of the time, oxygen is going to be a negative two. The only time it's a negative one is when you have it as a peroxide, like hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, then it's a negative one. Hydrogen is almost always a plus one, unless it's bonded to a metal, then it's actually a negative one. Fluorine is always negative one. It is so electronegative, that's just the way it is. When you're looking at a formula, um, let's say you have KNO3, the K is going to be a plus one, the O is going to be a negative two, well, what the heck's the N? This is where the next rule comes in handy. The sum of all the oxidation numbers for a neutral compound must add up to zero. Well, in KNO3, if K is a one and O is a negative two, but there's three of them, that acts like negative six. If I can get my fingers in there, negative six. Well, neg plus one and a negative six, what's N? Plus five. But if it's an ion, then the oxidation numbers need to add up to that charge. So if you're looking at the sulfate ion, SO4 negative two, the charge for S plus the charge for four O's needs to add up to negative two. Well, O's negative two times four, negative eight. What plus negative eight is negative two? Plus six. Sometimes it's nice to memorize some of those polyatomic ions, like in nitrate, and it's always a plus five. Sulfate, S is always a plus six. Just a little bit more about redox, and in particular, oxidation of metals by either an acid or a salt. A reaction between a metal and either an acid or a metal salt always follows this pattern. A plus BX makes AX plus B. And there's a couple of examples for you. You should notice that these are single displacement or single replacement reactions. What you need to know is that when a metal reacts with an acid, you're always going to make H2 gas. When a metal reacts with a salt, the two cations just switch places. All right, one last task. How do you know if a reaction is going to go? Well, this is where the activity series comes in handy. Now, this one is just from the internet, but there is one in your textbook if you'd like to look at it. And what it does is it lists the metals in order of decreasing ease of oxidation. In other words, at the top are the active metals. They will get rid of their electrons. They love to be oxidized. The ones at the bottom, not so much. They're very stable. They're less likely to react. They don't want to get rid of their electrons. So if you want to know whether a reaction is going to occur, what you need to do is look at the two metals that are reactants. One should be a solid and one will be an ion. The ion must be below the solid for the reaction to go. Memorize that rule. If you really want to get into why is that, we can have that conversation. But for right now, memorize the rule. The ion must be below the solid. You will get some practice with this as you work through this part of the unit.